Between the hurricanes, skyrocketing homeowners insurance, and the risk of encountering Jumanji-like wildlife, you might start to wonder, are Florida homeowners cursed? Heck, just look at YouTube. Over the past five years, there's been an endless stream of creators predicting the demise of Florida real estate. Incorrectly, I might add. And if you came here for that, I'm sorry, this is not one of those videos. But we will dive into the challenges of being a Florida homeowner, because trust me, as someone who is personally living through one of the worst case scenarios, it ain't all sunshine, flip flops and margaritas. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering why would I make a video like this? And honestly, I'm doing it with one goal in mind. Give people like us the tools and resources we didn't have when we decided to make the move and help you decide whether life here in Florida is actually right for you. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. And about six years ago, my wife, Kate, and I sold almost everything we owned, packed up our family of five, moved 1,200 miles south here to the greater Tampa Bay area. And honestly, it's been one of the best decisions we've ever made. From the beaches, the sunshine, the active lifestyle, we absolutely love it. But I know Florida is not for everyone and it's not an easy decision to make, so I wanna help. And over the past few years, we've helped more than 100 other families make the move too. And they've all had similar questions and concerns. So here's what I want you to know. If there are any questions you don't get answered during today's video, there are two ways I can help. Number one, drop the question in the comments below. Number two, reach out. There's a link to my calendar in the description where you can literally schedule a time to jump on a Zoom call with me and get your questions answered. Now let's answer today's burning question, are Florida homeowners cursed? All right, we all know owning a home in Florida might sound like a dream, but it definitely comes with its fair share of challenges. And today I'm gonna to cover those. I'm gonna give you a list, if you will, of these things that you need to watch out for that are super important, whether you are a Floridian already living here, uh, maybe you're newer to the area, or maybe you're someone who is actually considering leaving the state because some of the things we're gonna talk about, or you're someone who is considering relocating the area. These are important things to know. So I wanna start with number one, the curse of natural disasters. Now, hurricanes, as you may or may not know, are absolutely one of Florida's curses, if you will. Um, I know it's a strong word, but I, I mean, let's be real. This is something we are forced to deal with on an annual basis, and it's been happening since the dawn of time. You know, there is evidence, you know, pointing towards the fact that this is getting worse. There are other things that say it's not. At the end of the day, all I know is I'm a Floridian and I got to deal with it every single year from May through November. This is a reality of living here. And let me be honest with you guys. This is not something that you necessarily want to have to deal with, but it's the reality of living in Florida. Remember, Florida is a peninsula on the ocean. And depending on where you live in the state, you know, there are definitely areas that are more susceptible or um, at higher risk to, you know, hurricanes and tropical storms and those types of things. You know, the panhandle has been devastated over the last few years. And here where I live in Tampa Bay just this year, I mean, it's been 105 years since Tampa Bay has taken a direct hit on a hurricane. And to be quite honest, we still technically haven't. I mean, Sarasota took the, uh, the brunt of Milton and um, Hurricane Helene, which flooded a lot of homes here in the greater Tampa Bay area, uh, that was 100 miles offshore. So while you can say we haven't had a direct hit, we definitely have been affected. And I personally am living through one of those worst case scenarios. I've shared it here on the channel recently. You know, we're still in the middle of living in an RV in our front yard because our home took on water. Um, now we are, I, I would consider us very fortunate. Um, I live on a higher elevation. My home is 43 feet above sea level. And in theory, I should have never got wet. I didn't get storm surge damage. That's not what happened to us. But we got 12 inches of rain in about a six and a half hour period. And I found out very quickly that we are the lowest lot in the entire subdivision. And the, the second phase of the subdivision that was built back in the 70s, um, when my home was built, um, that the elevation is almost four and a half feet higher than my home. So man, can you imagine 12 inches of water? It's got to go somewhere and it always finds the low point. And our home was that low point. When we got home, our pool looked like, you know, a pond. Um, you know, and this is only a day after the hurricane. It wasn't even 24 hours. I think we got home within 20 hours of the uh, the storm. You know, we got water in the house and it was only a couple inches and just enough to make your life a mess. We had to tear out the floors. We um, we had um, a mold mildew test that came back positive. Um, but after talking to several general contractors, they all you know thought it would be 
best if we took some of the drywall up. Um, and forgive me, we don't have drywall, we have plaster. That's why there's a difference here. But um, ultimately we made the tough call and you know we've been displaced. It's almost been two months and this is not something that people wanna deal with. And, and listen, I understand, I'm a licensed real estate agent. You know, why would I be telling you the difficult things, the challenges about living here? But I'm, I'm also a Floridian and I'm a human being and I understand um, that this is not something that um, anyone wants to go through. Guys, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but I also recognize that this was the exchange that my wife and I were willing to make because we live so close to the coast. Now, is every home in this situation? Absolutely not. I'm giving you my personal story here, but we live just over a mile from the Gulf Coast beaches. So we are definitely in a situation, we're just between Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach and the Indian Rocks Beach area. And you know, we knew the risk. My father-in-law has lived in the state of Florida for 25 years. He also lives on the coast, he lives on the East Coast, and he's been through some serious hurricanes before too. So we understood the risk that we were getting ourselves into. But listen, until it hits you, you don't really see the devastation, you don't feel it. And our entire community has been walled. Now, other areas, like areas that our clients have been flocking to, like the northern suburbs, the eastern suburbs, like Wesley Chapel and Lando Lakes and Pasco County and uh, Lakewood Ranch and Parrish, uh, those areas had very few effects. Um, you know, there was flooding for sure um, through these hurricanes, but you know, and I'm getting deep here, y'all. Um, but the thing I would encourage you to do is make sure you're doing your homework. It's not just as simple as finding a home and buying it. You need to look at things like, is it in a flood zone? You know, flood zone X is something you wanna focus on. Are, are you willing to live in an evacuation zone? Those are areas that are susceptible to both storm surge and tropical force winds and hurricane winds when they come through those areas. I live in a non-flood, non-evacuation zone, but it's literally the next street over. So it's one of those, you know, do we really wanna test it? And we've decided as a family that we always pack up and take off if it's like a hurricane, you know, where it's cat three or higher. That's a personal preference. I know Floridians that are just like, I'm never leaving. I understand that, but this is a reality of living in this state. And it's not just the Tampa Bay area, right? Whether you live in Naples or the Panhandle or Miami or, or uh, up in Jacksonville, you know, the entire state is susceptible to this. Remember, we're only uh, like 130 miles across at the widest point in the state of Florida, you know, once you get south of the Panhandle, there's like 130 miles across. It's not a huge state. So again, a peninsula in the ocean, keep that in mind. Again, even though we're going through this, is this making us want to move? No, it absolutely is not something we want to deal with. Trust me, our life has been affected, but we love where we live. We love the relationships we've been able to build. We, we love the lifestyle exchange we're going to make. And you know, we don't have any plans to leave, even though we've had this happen, but this is something that you have to take into account. Do, do you want to live near the coast? Do you wanna be a beach baby? Because if you are, you're gonna have some of these challenges. These are the realities of living that close to the coast. If not, my recommendation is start looking inland, right? Start looking at those areas that aren't as susceptible to flooding and, and um, hurricane forced winds, even though it can go across the whole state. That's a whole nother conversation, but let's keep this list rolling. All right, now the second thing that people talk about when they talk about Florida being cursed is overcrowding and traffic. And let me be the first to tell you that boy have things changed in the last five years. We're going on our sixth anniversary, which I think is like December 2nd. Um, we're so close, but trust me, the traffic when we moved here versus the traffic that we see today is entirely different. And the state of Florida is projected to take on another million residents over the next five to 10 years. It is continuing just to grow like crazy. Over 22 million people live in this state. In the greater Tampa Bay area where I live right now, we've had a 5% increase since the uh, the last census in 2020. So from 2020 to 2023, there was over a 5% increase. This is the same in Orlando. Uh, Miami was up just about 1%. I know everybody thinks it's been exploding, but it was only up about 1%. Jacksonville's also seen some tremendous growth. So keep that in mind as well. Now. Overcrowding leads to a lot of people who need to be on the road for work, for traffic, those types of things, and it just really can be painful. Now, um, driving through Orlando, 
<laughs> some of the most difficult sledding in the entire state. Uh, the I-4 corridor, avoid that at all costs if you can, right? That's the first thing I wanna let you know. Um, there are really cool things that you can, um, that, that are starting to come into play. You know, you got the Bright Line, which is our high speed rail, which goes from Miami all the way to Orlando. I hear a lot more people starting to use that. And why wouldn't you? Um, you can make really good time from, from Miami to Orlando. It stops all along the way. Um, thing goes over 100 miles an hour. You can really make a lot of good time without the stress. I think that that's fantastic. Fantastic. There are plans to bring it to Tampa. I'm excited for that because I would love to go visit my in-laws and not have to drive. I think the kids would have a blast too. That's something we're looking forward to as well. And when it comes to traffic, you know, congestion is a problem in all of these major metros, whether it's Miami, Orlando, Tampa, even Jacksonville, which isn't the highest populated area. Um, but definitely on the list. I mean, when you look at those four metropolitan areas, they are all in the top 25. Miami's in the top 10, or I think Tampa's 17, Orlando's like 20, and Jacksonville is somewhere in that 30 to 50 range. I don't know exactly where it lands, but like we are very large metropolitan areas and there's a lot of congestion when it comes to traffic. So if you are here and you have to commute to work, please keep that in mind. Um, another thing is like we rank uh, 10th in terms of the country in worst drivers. Um, we get to talk about curses. I'm gonna give you a couple of reasons, anecdotal why I believe that's the case and then also evidence-based too, right? So number one, the, the entire state of Florida is very transient. A lot of people move from a lot of other areas. Now, other areas have different driving rules and there's different behaviors and the way that people act on the road. There's just variances and differences, right? And um, things you may be accustomed to where you live are different here in the state of Florida. Like when I got here, the lights take forever. You can literally knit a blanket at some of these lights. It's crazy. You can answer emails. I'm not being an advocate for being on your phone, but guys, you can literally draft an entire email while you wait for the intersection to shift. It's crazy, right? That's one. Another thing that was different from where I moved from in, in the Detroit area is that you can do U-turns just about everywhere. Actually, there'll only be signs when you can't. And then where I lived, you absolutely could not do U-turns. Very rarely were you able to do that. We have what was called a Michigan left. Well, here you can just flip around at the, the the lights. It's pretty interesting. But people bring those habits to the area. We also have a lot of seniors who live in the state. You know, um, I wouldn't say it's fair to call Florida God's waiting room anymore because I know that term's been thrown out there. And um, trust me, I love and respect my seniors, so please don't take that as a slight. Um, I've just heard that term used um, many times, derogatory. Um, and you know. Tampa as an example where I live and I'm going to speak to this often because I live here but like the median age uh, for the resident of Tampa is 36 years old it's a very young city but most people think of Florida as like God's waiting room and it's just not however we do have a lot of seniors we do have a lot of international uh, part-time residents who come and trust me y'all they bring those driving habits some of them good a lot of them not, and these are things you need to keep in mind. So, you know, another quote unquote challenge of the area is the overcrowding. We're continuing to grow. They're continuing to build. There's gonna be more developments and more people on the road, which is making traffic more and more challenging. So these are things that you need to keep in mind before you make that ultimate decision. The third most popular thing that shows up on people's concern list is the wildlife. And I made the reference earlier to Jumanji, but if you're not used to that, it definitely can feel that way. You know, I literally got a video message from one of my friends this week where there was an alligator swimming at a pool in a party that they were at in South Florida. And <laughs> it's just one of those moments. Um, and she had posted it on Facebook and, um, you know, my comment to, to, to her was Florida things. And, you know, the response was laughter. And when you live here, this is the reality. I mean, guys, it's getting cool at night here in Florida. And in Tampa, where I live, we don't have uh, iguanas. That's not a thing. But only about an hour south, iguanas start living in the trees. And when it gets like 40 degrees, they start falling out of the trees, right? So, I mean, you literally can see an alligator in somebody's pool. Now, this is not normal. I want you to <laughs> take, take a moment and recognize that's not normal, but it is possible. And there are places where other people live that that is not possible. And you have to understand that we live with them, not the other way around. And the more developments that we that we build, uh, the more disruption that there is in the natural environment, those things are gonna move around. And this is the reality of it, right? So we've got like 
flying cockroaches. They call them palmetto bugs. I'm here to tell you that that's not what that is. That is not a palmetto bug, that is a cockroach. So who was ever on the marketing department there, that, that person wins because they got away with something there, right? Um, mosquitoes, I, where I live, that's not a, a problem. Actually, I, I have way less issues with mosquitoes since I moved to Florida than I did in Michigan, um, even though Florida is a swamp. I live closer to the coast. It's really not that, that big of a problem. I'm also not in a marshy, swampy area, so it's just not a big deal. But the one that you do need to be aware of that I think like would like live in a Jumanji movie are the noceums. And they're literally called noceums. I don't know the scientific name. All I know is you can't see them until they bite you and it is rough, man, it hurts, right? You've got red ants, you've got termites, um, there are wasps and yellow jackets, and there are snakes in the area too. And again, iguanas, there are cougars or panthers in the state of Florida. You know, we have coyotes, which is not exclusive to, to Florida at all, but like you can see this wildlife, wild hogs get out in the, uh, the natural environment from time to time. There's a lot you can run into. And add on top of that, the people, you know, letting exotic snakes run wild in, in the ecosystem too i mean it's crazy and i'm just going to share my, my my i'm going to be as transparent as i can with you guys right now um, i have seen alligators where they belong retention ponds natural wildlife conservatories like areas where they belong i've seen them i've never seen one in my own neighborhood in almost six years have i seen them in newer developments with retention ponds Absolutely. Um, I would expect to see them there. Um, have I ever seen one personally walking down the street? No, but if you go to a golf course, you can see one walking across the course because they like water, right? So like, this is the reality of it. I've seen one, no, two snakes um, in my yard in six years. Haven't bothered me or my pets. Uh, my kids have stepped on fire ants one time. Um, so that's something that you need to be aware of too. And then the no CMs, like I said, those little pesky buggers, they can get after you. So these are things you do need to be aware aware of, right? I'll, I'll get people calling me like, hey, I don't like bugs. I, 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 I can't live anywhere there is bugs. I'm like, you're calling the wrong state. <laughs> You've got to move to California or someplace dry and arid, um, but because this ain't it, right? We got a, um, a, a an environment here and an ecosystem that lends itself to, to growth. So um, if wildlife is concerning to you and not exciting to you, I would say proceed with caution, due diligence, you know, dig into areas that um, are, are more well established where there's less disturbance. Um, or if you're cool with it, run it. You know, everybody's got a different approach and a different um, tolerance for for, uh, for running in the wildlife, right? It's not for everybody. So make sure you keep that in mind before you make your move. Now, this next curse of living in Florida, unfortunately, is not exclusive to the state of Florida, and that's the rising cost of living. Y'all, over the last five years, everything has gone insane everywhere. And, you know, meeting with clients who are relocating from states like California, states like Seattle, states like Illinois, states like Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, um, you know, the Midwest, everyone has seen skyrocketing home prices, you know, inflation's been out of control. Um, in, in homeowner's insurance, which people think is exclusively a Florida problem, is not. You know, between property taxes and homeowner's insurance, I mean, I just saw that Progressive Insurance was no longer going to uh, cover the, any of their homeowner policies with fire anymore. You know, and you just had um, wildfires in New Jersey, and obviously that's a problem out west every single year. And, you know, I can get into a whole conversation about homeowner's insurance and regulation and those things but the reality of it is is that everyone is getting large increases on things like energy cost insurance cost um, and things are not getting cheaper and as you know the real estate market ebbs and flows it goes up and it goes down but even during recessions outside of the the great financial crisis in 2008 most recessions i think the last eight of them real estate either went sideways um, laterally or it just went up a touch which is fascinating when you look at that and you can see that on the fred chart i'll actually put that down below for anybody wondering what i'm referring to there's a, um, a chart from the uh, Federal Reserve where they put out. Um, and on that chart, you'll see housing prices and it'll show these gray bars um, where each recession has occurred. And you'll be able to see what happened with real estate. Why I'm sharing this with you guys is because 
you know, housing is part of that cost of living and between food and energy and insurance and automobile, I mean, we all know what's going on here, but Florida has not been immune to this. And we've had a lot of high income earners move to the state, which put a ton of pressure on locals because for the longest time, Florida was known as the land of milk and honey for very little money. Housing was cheap here insurance was not expensive here and it has just skyrocketed it's not been exclusive the last five years it's really been 10 years and kind of building there's been a lot of um, regulatory battles there's been attorneys suing insurance companies and being able to charge astronomical prices there's so many different contributing factors to this that again i could do an entire video and still not nail it all um, but the reality is is you know the the median home price in the state of florida is over four hundred thousand dollars and that's not exclusive to Florida, right? The United States is in the $400,000 range, which means if you are going to move to the state of Florida and buy a house, you need to be making at least a hundred grand, right? They, you got to be making at least about 25% of the mortgaged amount um, in order to, to, to be able to qualify for an asset like that. And really, if you, you know, you're going to be wanting to making more than that, you know, 125. People ask me all the time, like Juan, I make 75 grand. I've got a family of four. Would you move to Florida and buy a home? The answer to that is no, I wouldn't recommend you do it. You'll be living on a shoestring budget. And I know that is very similar in a lot of other places, but I just want you to be aware of that before you make the move, because it, like I said, cost of living here has continued to increase. Inflation is down, but inflation is exactly what it, 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 it means due to inflate. We're not going into deflation. This is just disinflation. We're having prices increase not as fast, right? So like, that's a whole nother conversation too that we don't have to get too far in the weeds, but y'all just keep this in mind. Nothing is cheap anymore, right? Unless you're gonna live in rural Mississippi um, or areas like that where housing is very inexpensive, you know, it, the cost of living in these areas, you really have to pay attention. So keep that in mind, you know, the, the average starter home now, you know, is like 1800 square feet when they used to be 1200 square feet. And, you know, builders have to pay a lot more to build houses. They have to build the infrastructure when they didn't have to do that in the past. You know, when they were building homes in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, the counties and the cities built the infrastructure. Now they put those all in the builders. And I'm not here to play a sob story. I just want you to understand the cost that's associated with these things, right? They have to do environmental impact uh, fees and, and um, all of these different surveys and everything before they get thing going. It literally costs 30 or $40,000 to get all the permitting and everything ready to go so they can go build a home for you and I to purchase. And this is why things get more and more expensive over time. There's a lot of contributing factors. Like I said, interest rates are still high up in the 7%. If you get a new home, I'm seeing interest rates down in that four, four and a half percent range. But like, just keep this in mind. Cost of living has continued to rise and Florida is no different than any other state. But there are a lot of high income earners that have moved in the state as well, putting more and more pressure because they got more disposable income to spend. That puts a lot of pressure on locals. This is where you start to see some real challenges about, you know, um, being a place where people love to move to, right? We're paradise, man. People want to move here. I am one of those people, right? And I've come here and built a life, built a business. You know, we, we are fortunate enough to have, we have a team and we're able to help people live out their dream here too, but it does always come at a cost, right? There's always distortion when things like that occur. So just keep that in mind as you uh, start sizing this up. One of my favorite tools, if you're not familiar with it, is the Forbes Cost of Living Calculator. It allows you to put in your salary and then put your salary in the area you're moving to and it'll basically give you how that money spends where you're in the area you're looking to move to. It's awesome. It shows like, hey, you know, based upon your salary, you can make X amount less and still live the same quality of life or your money will spend like Y. It's really, really cool. So check that resource out. I think you'll love it. All right, and speaking of curses, we're gonna go deeper on this insurance topic, right? So insurance is one of the major culprits in fueling the, you know, cost of home ownership crisis. And the prices on homeowners insurance vary wildly depending on where you live, the type of home you live in, how old it is, the age of the roof. There are so many contributing factors, right? We see these beautiful historic coastal homes, you know, that are right by the water. And what most people don't recognize is some of them are uninsurable or the cost of insurance is literally people's salaries for the year, right? So like, 
it can be crazy expensive to try to insure coastal real estate. So keep that in mind if that's something you're interested in. You know, if you buy a hundred year old home that is in a flood zone, that is in a evacuate hurricane evacuation zone, again, your insurance is going to be astronomically expensive unless you have the actual finances to completely tear your home down to the studs and rebuild it because of a hurricane. I would strongly encourage you to look at areas that are non-flood, non-evacuation zones, and newer construction in its preference. And I'm not trying to tell anybody how to live, but the insurance cost, and we sell a lot of these homes, right? I just had one of the agents on our team. She's amazing. She just bought a home in Wesley Chapel. It's not a small home. I think it's over 2,000 square feet. Um, her insurance policy was like $1,300 a year. And the home she sold was just about, I think, eight or 10 miles away from the one she bought. Um, and that home was built in the 50s. And their insurance was like eight grand a year. So wildly different, right? $8,000 and it's nothing to hear insurance premiums if you you know move to the south south florida right like you start talking about areas like miami uh lauderdale those say i mean boca like you hear insurance averages at ten thousand dollars for for a house y'all like that's real and then there are different areas where again you can get a thirteen hundred dollar policy you don't know until you do your homework so make sure that this is part of the diligence and, and again i can get into the reasons why um, i can get into the politics um, and give you my opinion but none of that is helpful the reality is if you want to live in the state of florida you have to do diligence because some of the insurance costs are going to put um, some of these homes out of reach for you and your budget other people are unaffected by it right you just have to know how to approach this we have a number that we can't get above you know because i have a budget just like everybody else even the millionaires have budgets y'all <laughs> you know and we're not one of those people so we were very mindful about buying a home in a non-flood non-evacuation zone that's a block home rather than a stick built home because a block home from an insurance perspective is more likely to stand up to hurricane forced winds than a uh, home that has been built out of wood. And if you didn't know that's a thing in Florida, it absolutely is. And there's way more nuance on this. If you have more questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and the team. Um, like I said, my information is down below. Schedule a time on my calendar. Happy to jump on a Zoom call. There is no obligation, y'all, but answer questions you have because I didn't have that person when we made that move. Fortunately enough, I've been selling real estate for 12 years, so I knew what questions to ask, but trust me, I was still ignorant about a lot of Florida things, those things that I have learned and I'm willing to share. So if you've got more questions, don't hesitate to connect. So the question really is, so are Florida homeowners cursed? Maybe, depends on your point of view, right? Um, are they blessed? Definitely. We love where we live. Even with having to deal with one of the worst case scenarios, we are grateful we took the art shot, right? Because in theory, we shouldn't have done it. But we, we've been dreaming about this our entire lives, right? My, my wife has been coming to the state since she was a little girl. My very first trip down here was on a Disney cruise. I was in the marching band. I, I got to go on a, on a boat over to the Bahamas and come back and there was dolphins and it just wrecked me. I knew what lifestyle I wanted. This past weekend, I was, you know, it's, it's, it's almost December and I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida on the bay. My kids are at a outdoor swim meet we're there for sun up. There's nothing like watching the sun rise across the bay with um, the pier in the background and there's dolphins kicking up. And y'all, this is what we wanted, right? And I moved from an area, I, I, tell, I used to tell this all the time, but like, I don't have to shovel sunshine. I had to shovel snow, but I do not have to shovel sunshine. And I recognize that this isn't going to be for everyone. And I'm not here to try to sell that to you. That's not my goal. But if your dream is to live in an area that some people consider paradise, including myself, just understand even paradise has its challenges. You're gonna have to deal with some of those. Be smart about it, due diligence, ask great questions. Like I said, connect with us. I'm happy to answer any of those questions you have. Make sure you watch the next two videos that YouTube's gonna put up here because they're really gonna help you make a decision as well. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life.